Hello, this is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf, and today I want to talk a little bit about sustainability metrics for golf courses. And sustainability is one of those terms that I think Stephen Colbert would express as being that has a high level of truthiness to it. Uh, you have sort of a gut feeling for what uh, sustainability means, but you don't have a lot of evidence and logic backing up those uh, those feelings. And if we look at the language in, in the golf industry in particular uh, surrounding performance or things that we consider performance, there's many things are subjective. We talk about fast, we talk about firm, we talk about green, we talk about brown. There not a lot of uh, terms that are, are really solid. For example, compare sustainability to the terms accountability, reliability, measurability. Those are things that we have a very good solid understanding of. We, we know they give us a, a certain um, amount of performance based on a number or an objective measure. Sustainability is a little different. We do know what's not sustainable, though. For example, take Lehman Brothers from 1850 to, to 2008, and uh, they're gone. And uh, they weren't sustainable, and we just didn't know that they weren't going to be sustainable a few years ago until we saw the environment change and, and a number of factors blew up, and they're gone. Uh, here's another example, which is uh, Cypress Golf Club in the uh, Orange County area of California. Uh, in 2003, a beautiful golf course, uh, one of the first buffalo grass course roughs, uh, very nice uh, design, but look by uh, 2010 or 2011, uh, we see that it's gone and it's been replaced uh, by a land swap from the community that felt a church was more important to have than the golf course. So golf courses are particularly vulnerable from a sustainability perspective on the business side because they can be just washed away. I mean, you can just scrape them off and they're gone. Uh, from an environmental side, I think we can be a little bit more specific and that's the type of metric that I want to talk about. And here's uh, an example of a, of a course that's improved sustainability. This is Barona Creek uh, from the Barona Band of Mission Indians that Sandy Clark is a superintendent at. And if you notice the tee boxes, the square boxes around there, they were able to take those tees and in this picture, remove the turf and the maintenance, the water, the inputs that are used for the surrounds of those tees out of the program. So they improve their level of sustain sustainability. That's the type of thing that we are looking for as far as metric is concerned, not maybe their absolute level of sustainability because we just don't seem to know how to measure that right now, but we can look at their relative level of, of sustainability from year to year. Uh, is the facility improving in sustainability or declining in sustainability? Now, if you want an example of a completely sustainable golf course, this is the only one I know of. This is Gopher Golf in uh, Nyland, California, and it is a totally sand golf course. Uh, there are no maintenance staff, there are no inputs, there's no irrigation water used, uh, there's nothing really involved with maintaining this golf course. There's also no profits and it doesn't contribute to the economy in, in any way. About the only way this golf course would disappear would be from an earthquake that would just take the land away. But that's what sustainability looks like for a fully sustainable golf course and I don't think that's where the industry uh, is heading and I don't think that's where we want the industry to go. So what are some of those measures or metrics that we can use to evaluate sustainability. Well, here's a set of, just to give you some general kinds of guidelines that might be uh, considered. We're talking about the acres of, uh, of, of grass on the course or the total size of the uh, maintained areas. If you can cut it down, you're getting more sustainable like Sandy Clark did at Barona Creek. Uh, you can use uh, switch from domestic water to recycled water. You can mow fewer times during the week. Uh, you can uh, tolerate some diseases, insects, and weeds. So all of those things are, are good, and they all work well. But there's one caveat in this whole thing, is that any of these practices have to be approved by and uh, appreciated by the golfers. So if the expectations are the same uh, when you're moving toward sustainability as they were when you weren't so focused on sustainability, there's a heavy pressure on the golf course superintendent because he's the one that will be responsible for those changes. So there's a little bit of a problem with, uh, with how sustainability is implemented. So let's take a, just a sort of a rough idea of how the sustainability thing might play out in the uh, economics of golf course management at a golf course. And we just look at sustainability on the, on the bottom here and profits going up the graph uh, on the top. So we're not talking about absolute levels of sustainability, it's just less sustainable to more sustainable. Lower profits to higher profits. Well, if you start to increase sustainability, that means you're cutting back on maybe total irrigated acres, uh, you're mowing less frequently, you're putting less inputs in, your profits are gonna increase 
<laughs> because you're not really doing anything except pulling back the pulling back the inputs. And that will work for quite a while until you get to a point at the top where your profits will start declining as a result of golfers not showing up because there is something about the course, the way it looked or played that was not satisfactory. So you start to lose profits. That's the golfer expectation tipping point. And that point will be as a specific location for each golf course and it will change. It will shift from course to course depending on the tolerance of the golfers. They have complete control. But if you miss on these things and as we go to fully sustainable like we said before, you'll see those profits drop off and you end up at something like gopher golf where you're uh, you're fully sustainable but you don't have any profits so you don't what are the metrics that we can uh, use and, and we got a few that are proposed here that a golf course can take a look at you take these measurements this year and then you compare them to next year and the year after and hopefully in, with this just these simple seven metrics you'll start to develop a plan to improve sustainability through the years. There's a lot more sophisticated ways of approaching this, uh, this system, and you have um, projects like the Audubon Cooperative Sanctuary Program. Those types of programs are very good, but they're not accessible to everybody uh, or all the golf courses out here, and you should at least have this, this type of data to uh, support your sustainability efforts. And those include total maintained acres, uh, total water used, total nitrogen and phosphorus applied, total amount of pesticides in category one, two, and three. And in those cases, you're targeting the use of only category three or biologicals. That's where your IPM programs come into play. Uh, we're talking about manpower, uh, fuel use, and electrical use. Those seven parameters are a good way to start looking at sustainability at your facility. Take a look at those now, snapshot from today, and then take a look at them again next year. Did you improve and reduce any of these inputs, then you're moving forward in that long path towards sustainability. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you consider uh, starting to take some data on these measurements and these metrics and try to determine if you can move your uh, facility toward increased sustainability. Thank you.